Hey everybody, all I've been doing for the last few minutes is laughing because of course in the last video I tried to push pause and I pushed end feed. So here I am back in the light box for the cameo presentation. I'm not going to drone on too long because you've been so patient with me so far. So this is part two of today's double header, if you will. So this is further proof that I do not um, splice or edit my videos. This brooch was on my jacket yesterday. Yesterday. I wore him and I took him out of my Bakelite collection and I just wanted to show him before I put him back in my collection. There's the back of the brooch. That is an original Bakelite pin stem. So just so you know, when you're looking at Bakelite, please look closely at the findings. There's a lot of reproductions out there. Also, notice the very fine scratches across the surface. That's another way to tell that you have an authentic 1940s Bakelite brooch. And look at this dog's face, the glass inset eyes and the carving. I absolutely love this pin. Now, on to the things that I am wearing. I have a little um, spot of blood on my hand because uh, my hands are so dry. But there's the diamond ring that I normally wear. Here is the Norwegian bracelet that I had on that I think is truly exceptional and that I love very much. Here is the ring by Bora, B-O-R-A. And that is a was some sort of um, quartz crystal, and then I've never been able to fully figure out what that inclusion is on the inside. I've had certified gemologists look at it. They believe that it's a rutile crystal, but they weren't really exactly sure what we had growing on the inside of that quartz. And the uh, mounting is sterling silver, hand forged, and then a 24 karat gold bezel, solid 24 karat gold that then contains this stone. I bought this from Bora Direct, and we actually took photos together um, at the gem show where I bought this from him. And um, it's of his A-line, so, you know, again, it was slightly more expensive than most of his things, but um, totally worth it. Oh, another scratch on my hand, <laughs> because I'm always so clumsy with stuff. This is the Navajo cuff that I was wearing, and I will slip it off really quick to give you a close-up. And um, what's beautiful about this Navajo cuff is it's it's one of the earliest that I own, and in its technique, it looks like blacksmith forging, how they made this very, very thick-walled sterling or coin silver sheet, and then they took a chisel and a hammer, and they cut, they hammered and cut this, and then scrolled this piece of metal like a blacksmith would forge um, an item. So it looks extremely, extremely primitive in its approach, and you can tell by the inside how early. Again, these are a little difficult to date, but this is probably at its earliest form around 1885 to 1895, and to find Navajo jewelry that early is very difficult and getting extremely expensive. So on the top here, you can even see that the bezel is extremely warm worn away, and that's not forged at all, meaning that's not faked. That's honest wear that someone wore this cuff and basically wore that bezel away, all right? So you can tell an extremely early, early cuff. And then the most interesting part is a very classic form of a double terminal on the back of the cuff, okay? So it is the, the back is just as important as the front, but look at how incredibly old those turquoise stones are. And look how they're worn down. Um, you can see that that is and was a higher dome capuchon, and it has worn down to a very flattened, flattened. Same thing here. This used to be higher dome and worn down extremely. We're talking 50, 60, 70, or 80 years of constant wear um, passed down generation to generation and then wound up um, with me. It was purchased from a pawn shop. And again, it was put on a scale and sold for silver weight. Um, these cuffs today, if you were to find one like it, I'll give you a loose estimate and say between 
two to three thousand dollars wouldn't be unheard of. And to an advanced collector, it might be double that. Um, but a beautiful rendition of a very early, early Native American cuff. Um, we are not going to talk about um, any other jewelry I'm wearing besides some of my photographs that I wanted to bring on to show you some of my pictures that I have done. This was a sandwiched negative, meaning there were two negatives put together and um, sandwiched it together. Um, my friend Rob was the model, and then I double exposed it with plant forms. I'm sorry, I can't get the whole picture on screen. Let me back out just a little tiny little bit. Um, no, it's still not going to work, but you get the gist of um, what I was going for. I was going for natural and beautiful and um, very well done. So um, if you're offended by a tuchus or a little butt with little feet, sorry about that. But um, there we go. That's one of them. Uh, this one was a photograph of him laying on rocks, and it was in the wintertime. And there was ice and snow and um, a lot of cold. It was freezing out, and he so generously went and laid out on the rocks for me. And then I double exposed the picture with another photograph. So that's another classic Jason double exposure. And then on to this one, which is a little bit more PG, um, a little bit maybe more acceptable for my viewers, is um, him. And here is his head. So you're looking at like the top and the back of his head, and then his shoulders and his back, and then his legs and his hands. So he was actually um, kneeling down on a table. Um, and there's the table in the very corner. And then I double exposed that one with um, berries. So that was a very natural photograph as well. Um, I will get into more of my photographs, um, but those were in my shorts. And I just wanted to mention that because people have asked about my photographs. Now, I've got my hands all cleaned up. Let me make sure that um, I have them totally cleaned. Um, there we go. And we'll get into the cameos. So, uh, I'm very well known for my cameo collection, and I'll start with this one just because she's the first one. And I wanted to discuss both time periods and materials used, and I've got to step on the gas in this video because I've got a lot to say about these, but I want to keep it going. So this is a hard stone cameo, meaning it is one piece of stone that is a banded agate, and the top of the stone was white, and the back of the stone was kind of an opalescent, um, shall you say taupe, or in the brown family. And she is so beautifully and expertly carved. Look at the details on her hair, and then look at the engraving on the 14 karat gold mounting. The classic pin mechanism for right at the turn of the century, 1900 to 1915. I believe that some people think it goes as late as 1918. I don't think there's any room to fight over that because we none of us were there when those were produced. And then you have the swing bail, which on most antique pieces is present, so it could be worn as a brooch or it can be worn on a necklace. And you can fold that down. But look at the stone itself. I wish, let me see if I have a light handy. I do. Let me see if I can light this up just a little bit. Look at that stone. Absolutely beautiful, 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 beautiful stone and beautiful work in the carving. Let me get a little closer up. Let me hold her right here. And let me get a little closer up for you. Look at the detail of that face. Just an absolute beauty. Now, the reason why I, um, what should I say about this? The reason why I'm showing you these out of my collection, it's only some of my cameos in this video. But the reason why I'm showing you these is cameos are normally classically just beautiful women. Um, and what I tried to do with my collection was find not only beautiful women, but extremely unusual versions. And then I progressed forward with the very unusual subject matter, which we'll get into. So this is a religious Virgin Mary. Um, her serenity on her face, the emotion, it's almost like someone that we all know. That's almost like a friend that maybe we haven't met before, um, like a past life. Um, this is shell. It was carved in Italy. Um, it is 14 karat and 10 karat gold, slightly newer rollover clasp. So 
you know, can you say, oh, I don't know. Can you say from maybe the 20s, 30s? Yeah, you most certainly can. You know, you most certainly can. Beautiful rope twist border, 14 karat gold, three plus one chain. So there's three links and then one. So three plus one. Some people call these paper clip chains. This is not exactly a paper clip chain. But when I get to one, I'll show you what one is. Now, what's unusual about this cameo, not only the subject matter, but look at the signature. Let me zoom in. Look at the signature of the artist that produced the cameo. Again, there were hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people producing cameos and that were both signing and unsigning. I've yet to figure out the artist on this and I wish I could. Um, I most certainly wish I could figure that out because he or she, I believe a male, worked very hard to get this together. Um, in shell cameos, you will sometimes see little hairline cracks. That is normal. Um, it comes from two things, from the stress of both carving and setting the cameo, and also from humidity, um, expansion and contraction over the years. Shell is a natural material, so of course it expands and contracts. So that tension in expansion and contraction can cause slight hairlines or fissure cracks to run through them. Don't be too alarmed about that. As a purist collector, it may bother some people, but I accept it because it's part of the material. And again, look at her face. I just want to zoom in one more time on that expression. Absolutely beautiful. I love her very, very much. And again, I don't think she was much money. I think maybe back in the day I spent, you know, um, $150, $200. Now I wouldn't sell it for, boy, I, I probably wouldn't sell it at all, um, to be honest. This one... And excuse the bags, but all these things are packed up. So this is kind of, you know, again, a classic Jason video shot from the hip. <laughs> um, nothing rehearsed in these videos, if you couldn't tell already. So um, this is an Essex crystal. So E-S-S-E-X, Essex crystal. So essentially, some people say that this is glass. In this particular one, they are incorrect. This is actually rock crystal that's been reverse carved. So carved from behind, and then painted from behind, and then a piece of mother of pearl was then inset from behind the carving. Unfortunately, water or perfume seeped under the bezel and went behind the carving and stained the mother of pearl, both in this area and here. It doesn't bother me in the least. It is only a part of this piece's history and should be respected as such. If someone really was bothered by that, they could unset this, they could move the bezel back, they could unset the crystal, and then they could clean that and put this back together. For me, it only adds to its history. They further, the artist, further accentuated the frame with white glass enamel. So that is white glass. Yes, there are some little chips. And then when we flip this over, these are almost always closed back set. Here is what they consider um, a trombone clasp. So as you can see, it looks like a trombone slide. We can debate the age of that clasp at a different time. Some people say some things I don't necessarily agree with. Um, sorry about the moisture from my hands. Um, and then you have the gold hallmarks right there. But again, a trombone clasp, was that only French? Some people incorrectly say that's only a French mechanism. That is simply not true because we have makers that moved um, um, to the other continents that produced with this same trombone clasp. And it may just be that it originated in France, but when people were transient and produced things in other areas, then it's not just only made in France, which is a strong indicator by the hallmarks on here. And there are tiny little touch marks right there on the pin stem. I will go and get my um, gold hallmark book and I will show you eventually in another video why this is not from France. It did go through another country and was essayed in another country. So there are the little hallmarks as well, but just a really beautiful version of Essex Crystal. Now, I have two more to show you. Um, I probably have a strong 15 or 16 in the collection, but I only brought three because they're not technically cameos, but they are carvings and I love them. Here's a little dog and it is a spaniel. Look at the detail, look at the face, look at the eyes, the collar, the fur, and there is a piece of fabric inset from behind. So this is again rock crystal that's been carved 
and carefully carved, reverse painted, and then inset in there's fabric behind. It is set in gold. And again, don't age, or I should say date, not age, but don't date the items by the pin stems. This has been redone. So this would have been a tube hinge, um, which would have been original, but this is a, a, a newer replacement. And then this is definitely not what the original um, clasp would have looked like. It would have just been a little gold wire instead of this flattened later version of a clasp. Again, they probably redid that right at the turn of the century, but this is definitely 18, I'm going to be careful here, 1875 to 1885. But look at that little fella or the little girl, just really beautifully done. And I love the face and I love the detail. And look how tiny. I mean, it is, you know, look at the size of my, my hands and look how small that is. It's just such the small piece and um, really beautifully done. Let me put that back in its bag. And then the grand finale for Essex Crystal is this one. And, um, you know, I, 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 I'm just, sometimes when I see these things, I'm just at a loss. This is heavenly. Um, I, I could go on and on and on about this. So we not only have an extremely talented carver who was the best at carving Essex crystal, but we have the gold frame. So you have a very talented carver and an extremely talented painter. And then you have a goldsmith that was the best of the best. So we have this curvilinear frame in 14 karat gold. There are two rifles crossed and then inside the frame are two bullets um, that are inside the frame. I don't know if this was some sort of award for a hunter, but you can see the turn of the century clasp right there with the little foldover mechanism. It's solid 14 karat gold. And the carving, again, look at this deer. Look at the face. Look at the tiny little white dot that's painted on the eye. And then look at the mother of pearl the glowing mother of pearl behind that stately, wonderful, brilliant, intelligent deer. Um, I, again, I can't believe the skill that it would take to carve that scene from behind and then to paint that. I, you know, I'm an additive artist and that is a subtractive process and then an additive process. So that artist was so versed in both directions. Um, and most artists' brain only function in one direction. But that artist, um, what an accomplishment. And then the goldsmith that made the frame. Uh, I'm highly doubtful that the same artist made the crystal and, and the same artist made the frame. I would say that that's not true. Um, there are no hallmarks on who produced this. But again, it would be a toss-up. I don't know if it's American or if it's English. Um, and it it's just remarkable. Um, it is truly a masterwork of Essex Crystal and very sizable for its um, style. So there's that. Let me put that back in its bag and keep it safe. I'm sorry for the little delay in between, or I shouldn't say I'm sorry, but I regret the little delay. Let me grab this one. So I do store my things in Crown Royal bags, and uh, there's a reason for that, and I'll get into that later. These three, boy, oh boy, oh boy. Um, all right, so this one... I, uh, again, I went after unusual, I went after um, not typical, and this is a classic example. I fell in love. Um, I absolutely fell in love with this. It is uh, a warrior, and um, and then I believe that's called a uh, centaur. I'm always, um, I always struggle to know if that's, uh, yeah, it is. It's a centaur. So, I believe it is. <laughs> um, uh, someone will correct me if it's if it's not. But um, look at the tension. Look at the um, skill that it took to carve this. Again, we're in shell. I don't want to get into um, what type of shell this is because I have kind of let go a little bit of my information on certain shells. And then there's queen conch, there's bull's mouth. Um, I can get into the different types of shell that's used, but I'm not going to have the time to do that right now, um, nor the desire to make a mistake. So you'll have to forgive me on um, going over the types of shell that were used, but I don't want to give misinformation. There are some on YouTube, some people on YouTube that give um, misinformation, but I'm not going to be one of them. This frame is 14 karat gold. It's signed here, and the rollover mechanism... 
I believe that the cameo is much older than the mounting. Um, I believe that it was probably remounted at some time, but the frame really accentuates that carving. Um, I did pay, I think I paid 600 for this. I would for sure pay up to 1500 or 2000 for a cameo like this now. Um, very sizable. So about two and seven eighths, almost three inches, and then about two to two and a half across. And uh, again, the detail, the gesture, the energy. Um, and then this is a problem with the shell, the way the shell originally formed. All right. So that's a natural um, problem in the formation of the shell, but doesn't affect the carving. So the artist still continued to use this because he or she knew that likely a he that they uh, that imperfection would be underneath the seam. All right. So just really um, a fantastic cameo. And the reason why I show you these is to show you the unusual versions instead of just the classic, you know, pretty woman. There's nothing wrong with the classic pretty woman cameo. I have plenty of them. But these were just the ones that were um, much more desirable. Um, and this is a multifigural. Again, I remember the story here. Um, it's a mythological scene and it's Cupid. I'm, I'm going to draw a blank. It might be Psyche, but it's definitely Cupid. And this gentleman is forging the arrows for um, the female and for Cupid. And then there is the warrior right there. Look at the detail and check out the frame. It's 18 karat gold. It is not signed. It is not signed anywhere, but it is 18 karat gold. Look at the early rollover there and the tube hinge here. So again, that's a classic tube hinge. So when you see a tube hinge, you'll always remember it. Three pieces of tubing soldered to a wire. That is technically a tube hinge. That is fairly early. Now, you can have an artist like me who makes a tube hinge. I could make one tomorrow, you know, um, and I, it, it's not, you know, uh, almost 200 years old, but that is a very early tube hinge. And then the way this is mounted, this kind of cut back frame with these tiny little prongs, but look at the wire work that was applied to the surface of the gold. And just the detail alone in that frame. So the whole thing made a lot of sense to me. Um, original frame, original carving, again, shell cameo, carved at Italy. I would say value on this one, you would be very hard pressed to get this for less than 1500 or 2000 now, um, in these days. So I only paid a hundred dollars for it back when I bought it. But again, it was one of those ones that was a have to have. Sorry that I didn't remember the scene on that one. And then this one is also going to be a little bit of a challenge. The reason why is this is a relatively new acquisition for me. And this gentleman, I fell in love with the face. I fell in love with the eyes and I fell in love with his nose and his beard and his headpiece. It is incredible is what it is. Um, very, very, very unusual subject matter and very unusual to be this early. And look at how gigantic it is. So again, very, very large, set in both 14 karat and 18 karat gold. And look at the detail on the face. Look at the detail on the outfit. And then they went the further, you know, further mile to put such exquisite detail in the fur trim on his collar. I'll let you just take that in for a second. I just feel like I should be quiet for a moment and just let you reflect upon this gentleman who was religiously important, um, historically important, and an object that I revere greatly. So um, the goldsmith did an incredible job on this frame as well. Um, I love this. I absolutely love this and what an honor to own it and more of an honor to share it with all of you. Um, I want to make a comment on when you look at the bezel of a cameo, look at how this bezel undulates with the curvature of the shell and the carving and look at how tightly this is rocked over and did not break the cameo. A true hand of a master goldsmith. Um, no denying that this person was the best at what they did. Um, there are some very faint and small hallmarks 
right there on the C rollover, the C clasp. And um, I think that one, oh, I'm going to draw a blank on origin. I need my book. <laughs> but um, I do know the origin that this passed through. I'm not sure where exactly this started life. Um, but 99.9% .9 of these carvings um, were done in Italy. And, um, but again, I, his face just says it all. Um, and I, I love him so much. I am at a loss for words. Um, sometimes that happens when I look at beautiful things. Um, sorry for the ums. <laughs> uh, let's see. Um, this one, um, again, I, um, tried to bring out some of my more unusual and he falls right into a line with that. Um, again, I don't want to fight over who this is, so I'm going to leave that unsaid for right now. I'm not getting into subject matter in this video just yet, but I'm going to talk about the fact that this carving... Let me zoom in. I don't know what's going on with my camera. Oh, I see what's going on. It's a little washed out. Look at the detail in the beard and the hair and the helmet. And the helmet even has a face. So look at the face in the helmet. And... Look at the detail on his face. Look how the artist got underneath his face and carved underneath his face to give a higher relief or a higher profile. And let me hold this steady. There we go. And the frame, absolutely Victorian. So right a probably with the compartment on the back, probably 18, this is going to be tough, 1865 to 1870. So this does lift up. So this comes out and woven hair would have been inset from behind. And the bale is completely original, it matches the cannonball border that's been applied to the surface here. And again, this is gold, but look at the oxidation and the tarnish. So I leave my pieces like this because that's its history. And this one is signed as well. Let me see if I can pick it up on camera. I think I can. Um, I don't ever use a loop in my videos, and I don't think a loop is going to help us on this. Um, there we go. Uh, there we go. And it's signed right there by the artist that did the cameo. Anytime you, anytime you see a signature on a cameo, you know you're in the presence of greatness and one that's extremely important. So please always look very close for a signature in your cameos and look for unusual subject matter, you know, so we're not dealing with um, the pretty ladies from the 1940s, you know, every single time. And there's nothing wrong with them. Um, but um, this is what I looked for every time I would buy. This has the original Victorian chain. I don't have the chain with it, but I do have another chain that um, was close to the original. And Victorian chains are getting extremely hard to find because most of them are melted down. This one is, let's see if we have a signature on here. I thought I did. Um, this one tested as 12 karat gold. Um, it is definitely at least 12 karat. Um, maybe more like 13 karat, but it was a little less than 14. Look at the work that went into this chain and completely in perfect condition. Um, nowhere, honest oxidation, and it slightly has a rose gold color, but that's just because of the oxidation. If you were to clean this, which would be um, not a good idea. I don't know why my hands are always so dirty in these videos. It looks like I was gardening and then I came right inside and did this video. <laughs> I don't know what my problem is. Um, it just shows that I'm a working person. That's all. Um, this, and it shows that I'm dirty. <laughs> Um, so this is um, completely handmade, completely hand constructed. And then most of the time, these cameos would have been worn on the front um, jump ring. This one, um, I know that this isn't the right chain for this because I do have its correct chain, but this is not it. The correct chain is on another pendant that I was wearing um, like two weeks ago. But finding chains like this, please, please, please look for chains like this. Oh, and let me show you the clasp on this. This little ball right here, that's really, really an old, old, oldie. So um, if you see that, that's an early one. And then let's see here. Okay, yeah, there we come open. So you put your finger here and then you open it here. 
Okay, so when you see this and when you see this, know that that's an early clasp and that is original to this. I would say that that chain is, its style is about 1860 to 1870, definitely before 1880 for sure. Um, very difficult to find in solid gold. You can find them in gold filled, not, not frequently, but you can still find them in gold filled. So please look for original Victorian chains. That's another thing of importance. And I have a box full of them. They're not in my house, so I wouldn't be able to show you now, but um, definitely they're in my storage um, and I will find them. But look at the face again. I got to go back to his face and I got to zoom in. The profile, everything. The sternness, but still the grace. I love it. And look how they plan the cameo. They plan the color so that the pink was only on his helmet. I am stunned by that. And that is shell. I don't think I said that before. It is shell. And it's the outside. Uh, yeah, the outside two layers of the shell. And um, just, <laughs> I I love this. I absolutely love him very much. Um, and I'll get into specifics on subject matter at a later time when I feel like my brain can be on it. And I don't want to give misinformation because um, it's not fair to my viewers. Now, let me look at, I have, oh, okay, we'll go with this one just because. So here's a great box, of course, dusty, but a pearl push button box. And look at that. So, of course, we can say it's angel skin coral, 100% angel skin coral. This one is is very old. This one is right at 1870. Um, again, when we look at the back, that is um, original. This may have been resoldered at one time, but um, I don't want to take it out of the box. But look at the coral from behind and look at the carving. But again, they tried to plan the pink of the coral to match where the face would be on this. And most of these are very, very small. Most of these versions are extremely, extremely small. This one is sizable. Um, I would say value on this, you know, they have gone up over the years, but I think when I bought it, maybe it was around $165. Now, if I found this, I wouldn't be afraid to spend at least 500, maybe 600, you know, just depended on my mood. And there would still be money left at that, um, for sure. Um, again, pricing subjective, um, but just my opinion, but beautifully carved angel skin coral angel. Um, and normally you'll see these and there'll be like three small faces. I kept to this one because this was for me the best version of this that I've seen. And I love her very much. Um, there's, it, she just, there's something about her that is very, very special. Um, a ring and you don't see very many early cameo rings. And this was bought at a pawn shop back in the day for $90. And um, just at the Georgian time period, so slightly, slightly, slightly before 18, uh, let me look at the back of this to make sure. Oh, no, I was a little bit wrong. <laughs> um, open back, so I think it was reset, but I would say about 1840 to 1850 has been redone. So the shank system looks Georgian, for sure. It is rose gold. And then if it was Georgian, this back would not be open, um, at least according to this guy. Um, and then we have a green turquoise cherub face carving. So again, unusual because it's front view and unusual subject matter. But look how it's very much so worn down. The nose is almost completely gone, but the gesture and the face is still there and a tiny size. I think that's like a size four. It's very, very, very small. Um, but just one of the ones that for $90, I knew that that was not even the price of gold at the time, you know, so I had to save that from being popped out and scrapped. I save a lot of things from, um, certain, um, death when it comes to materials. This one, again, uh, sorry for the length of the video. I hope I'm not losing everybody. Um, this one, I'll cover up the price just because I don't want, you know, I just don't want to discuss price sometimes. And this is one of them. Again, a Virgin Mary. Look how beautiful. Very serene, great composition. Again, carved out of shell, carved in Italy. And then a 14 and 10 karat gold frame. And I think, uh, let's see here. I think the wire tested as 14 and the rest tested as 10. But again, a rollover here, but old. And then um, a flip down bail. So, um, you know, did someone redo this class bet sometime? It's quite possible that that's been resoldered because um, it looks slightly different color than the rest of it, but a tube hinge. So you have a tube hinge there and then someone would fight and say, well, that's got to be Victorian. No, it doesn't. It doesn't have to be Victorian. They still did tube hinges slightly later. And like I said, I could make a tube hinge tomorrow if I wanted to. Um, so this is 
just a remarkable composition. Um, and I loved her very much. Um, so she had to come home with me as well. Now, the full scale version, um, anytime you get into a full scenic, which is this, um, a full figural, you get into slightly more money. Um, again, we see the Fisher cracks, and that definitely is from when the a bezel was rocked over. It did put some stress on the shell, and it did crack it. You cannot feel that with your finger nail. You can't feel the crack. So again, I'm not really concerned about it. Her face was beautiful because so miniature, and her detail was just remarkable. And then a gold-filled frame on this, and you can tell... Um, that this is slightly newer. So we have not a fold down. We just have a jump ring soldered down and then a jump ring at the top. And then you can see that this is definitely looks newer and it is. And then look at the hinge. So the hinge is definitely machine made. So that's not made by hand. That's a machine made hinge um, where the pin stem is put in. Beautifully done and on a gold filled chain. But I would say, you know, value on that, maybe it's in the $185, maybe to $200. And I think the reason for that is just uh, slightly less precious, but I loved it because it was a full figural Virgin Mary. And um, it, it's, it, I just think it's beautiful. I think it's beautifully carved. And the diaphanous nature of her gown, that it's almost see-through, is really... Standing on a cloud, the detail was just fantastic. Um, so that made me extremely happy as well and had to be committed to the collection. Let me look at a few others, and I'll just bring them over um, because I'm going to run out of steam, and I don't want to do that. Oh, I have so many of them yet to go. Um, all right, well, I'll, all right, I'll just bring them all, and then we'll just go one by one. <laughs> Here we go. So onset cameos. Um, hard stone, again, these are um, unset, but the work of art that went into these, they had to be purchased. So this one is one of the finest hard stones I've seen. And the reason for that is she's so gigantic. Um, and this would be around 1860, might be as old as 1850. And some people have even questioned if these are like 1830, 1840. I wouldn't disagree with the earlier date, but I think circuit dating is subjective. On this one, the depth of the carving, the ivy detail in her hair, the curvilinearness of these curls, the detail of her face, and again, look at how the face is shadowed. Oh my, I dropped her. Look how the face is shadowed by um, the way it's carved. So this is is much more shall you say, solid, and then this is much more almost transparent. So the opaqueness and the transparency adds to the depth of that eye and adds to the gracefulness of the nose. Um, sometimes the first thing to be chipped on these is the very tip of the nose. So just be certain when you're buying these to gently rub across the nose and make sure that they're not chipped. Okay, that's just a, a small piece of advice from, from me. Take it from someone who knows. And then you can see the banded agate of, of the rest of the stone. So it's not two pieces laminated together like the later, later cameos that we see. But look at the transparency again of that stone. Um, just a, 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 a breathtaking example and just so finely done and she was a have to have uh she was at an auction and i think pre-action estimate was yes it was 150 to 250 if i could buy this again today for four or five hundred i most certainly would do that um she's worth every penny of that because again a hard stone cameo is worth much more than just a shell cameo just so you know um because they're harder to do and they're much earlier and harder to find um, and much more difficult to carve. This one, it's not that it's any less beautiful because the stone that was used, look at, again, we have kind of the carnelian color, but then look at the opalescentness of the, the almost clear layer. Again, the detail in the hair, the Victorian earring, and her face just absolutely breathtaking. So she had to come home with me. Um, but again, let's see. Oh, she is signed. 
So that's the artist initials that produced that. Again, this one's probably, based on the earring and the hairstyle, it's probably 18, I'm going to say 1870, 1875. Um, but she is just extraordinarily beautiful. Um, there's nothing else I can say besides being stunning and hard stone. So again, you know, two layers of stone that grew together and then that were carved down. And can you imagine if you make a mistake while you're carving this, you have to start over. You know, um, it's it's just a simple fact that you would have to start the whole process over. Now, let me put those away. Um, and I am going to grab for this one. So I used to collect dual cameos, like two on one. I think this is maybe two, maybe I have two of them left. Um, but this one, again, I, I didn't much care for how thick the necks were. Oh, there's my Zito's fur. Oh, look, that's like a little Zito fur. I have to keep that. Um, I'll make a piece of art out of that in another half hour. Um, so this, I didn't much care for the clumsiness uh, clumsy nature of the necks. It, it it seems to be a little thick through this region. Um, the face is a little less detailed. So, you know, this didn't really get me going. But then this kind of shield, the detail of the helmet, um, the the uh, uh, energy of this back portion, you know, I, 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 I stashed it because I couldn't convince myself that the money that I would sell it for would make me happy. So there is, again, look at the metal difference. You can tell that this pin clasp has been replaced. Um, and let's see here. Yeah, that's been replaced as well. So there's soft solder there. So again, the tube hinge fell off from the Victorian time period. And the little C, you know, um, a lot of people were concerned with the little just C rollover or Oh, there's a crack there too. Um, so there's, um, you know, concern for wearability sake. So they replaced those in the 30s and 40s. Um, so that's a, a, a double figure old cameo. I do have one that's night and day, and I couldn't find it. It's probably in safety deposit. I couldn't find it for the video. So unfortunately, I just couldn't find it. This one, I should have saved this for last. Um, but, you know, you've stuck with me this long, so I had to give you one that um, really wows you. This one is incredible. It's 18 karat and 24 karat gold. So it's a very high grade of gold. But you can see why. Um, the quality of the cameo is, is probably the finest in the world. I have seen some cameos in museums that... Uh, ba basically, this rivals those. The detail and the skill that it took. This is a very famous scene. And again, I think it's Cupid and Psyche. Um, I could be wrong in that. And um, if I am, please go ahead and you know correct me in the comment section. Um, I loved this stone. So again, we have this base color in the hard stone. And then this opalescent white, opalescent pink overtone of the top where the stone grew in layers. So essentially you have three layers. You have orange and then an opalescent and then the white. So three layers of stone that this artist had to carve through. And look at the depth of the carving there. Just incredible, incredible detail. And the woman, um, Angel, holding the garland of flowers. The frame is just as beautiful as the carving. So when I looked at buying cameos, you can tell that I liked not only the carving and the detail, but I also liked the framework because of being a metalsmith, I paid attention to the way things were constructed and the way things were put together. A raised tube hinge on this one, so it's slightly raised up off the back, definitely a tube hinge, and then soldered together. Same over here. So we have the original just fold over clasp. And um, the way it's constructed, the artist knew that the tension on the cameo wouldn't be good. So they created this back plate that is now riveted in place so it actually holds the cameo because of the way the cameo edge is cut at an angle here. It's set from behind and then this artist closed the back off with this back panel and then riveted through, took the tension completely off of the cameo. So it's not a bezel setting. It's a wire soldered to the frame and then the cameo is inset from behind. So this goldsmith, talk about a brilliant person. Absolutely brilliant. But there is one of the world's finest cameos. 
um, and sizable, remarkable, phenomenal, makes me so incredibly happy. And I'm so glad that I'm able to share these with you. I just get so excited. And I hope you understand that, um, you know, living with beautiful things is, is easy and sharing them is like the best part, you know? It really is. It's the best part. This one I kept just because she was so unusual. Um, again, 18, this is going to be a little tough, 1860, uh, maybe 1855, 1865 show cameo but look how they planned the cameo so the background is one color and then her and her hair is another color and then they left that outside of the shell color and modeled color for the headpiece for the laurel wreath that she's wearing so again look at the face her eye her nose her mouth what an incredible incredible end result so the process to get there was a challenge. I love the diaphanous gown gathered by a button, the horn placement, and the curls of the hair. Look how incredible. And in ancient carvings, what they would do to get the curls of the hair, they would actually drill a hole. So you see where there's like holes drilled? So they would drill holes and then they would carve away around those to then get those tight, tight curls. But they did. They drilled a hole um, down in, they didn't drill it all the way through, but they drilled it down in so that they could make these tight curls of hair. Um, I love it. Tube hinge, um, soldered correctly, and a um, low carat or, yeah, it's a low carat gold frame that has a lot of oxidation on it and could have some silver content as well. So, wonderful, wonderful lady. Um, and again, just take her in, you know. Um, beautiful absolutely beautiful. Now, um, something that's not a cameo that made it into this box, <laughs> because it's unusual and I guess cameo-esque. Is that a word? Cameo-esque? I think I just made up another word. This is a piece of Wedgwood. So it's Wedgwood. And because it doesn't have any other marks besides Wedgwood, it's a very early Jasper Ware uh, plaque. And it's not a cameo, but it's made in the style of a cameo. And huge. Um, let me back out just a little bit. Look at how gigantic she is and just beautiful with the wings and her face and her gesture. Again, a flowing diaphanous gown, overly stylized and being beautiful all the way down to her little tiny toes. I mean, those could be the cutest toes God ever made. Um, what a beautiful, beautiful gesture. And again, mounted in 14 karat. It's signed here. Mounted around 1915, 1918. But the Wedgwood plaque is much, much, much older than that. Um, by you know, uh, 40, 50 years, I believe. Um, and a Wedgwood collector is probably going to uh, confirm that in the comments. So watch for that. <laughs> um, this is, um, again, that bail that folds up and clearly marked with the gold hallmark. And again, the classicness of this is is beautiful. And Wedgwood is normally like the pale blue and white. So anytime I got into any color besides blue and white, I really reached for it. Um, and it's something that I had to have. But again, I bought this years ago and thank God I did because I don't think I've seen one this sizable, this old, or this beautiful in a long time. Um, and I would challenge someone to say, look at mine. <laughs> uh, I would love it because it's like, you know, friendly competition. Um, but uh, remarkable in terms of the way it's put together and uh, the craft on the frame. So I, I really loved her. I thought she was fantastic. So, you know, when I say I love these things, it's true. I love them. Um, there's no denying that. So a hard stone ring and a small hard stone pendant. And, you know, in these videos, I should probably just lay everything out before I turn the camera on. <laughs> It'd make it a whole lot easier. Here is a tiny little cherub hard stone cameo. It is a pin, well, it was a pin, and it is a pendant now. So it does have the, the fold-up bail. And this would have had a pin stem and a little hook over here to wear it as a pin as well. But look how small. You know, so I go from, like, great big to tiny. And I, you know what I've said about miniature things before? It's much more difficult to carve and make something smaller. 
you know, bigger is more valuable sometimes. But sometimes the most, you know, delicate or the most miniature is sometimes the most difficult to produce. And this is a classic example. I can show you on this one. Look at the banding of the stone. Okay, so check that out. Let me hold it real still right there. Check out the banding. Okay, so there's banded portions is why they call it banded agate most of the time. So there's banded portions. There's the carnelian color and then an opalescent kind of pink. And then here we go again with the kind of mm, bluish white uh, top layer. So again, this is not laminated to the surface. And so you've got to look very, very close. Sometimes cameos, the later ones from the 30s and 40s that look like this, are glued together. You know, these are most certainly not glued together. This is Mother Nature, you know, gluing them together over thousands of years, forming the stones. And then an artist so carefully carves these and puts these in gold frames. This gold frame is 18 karat gold. And you can tell by the color of gold and you'll start to get more accustomed to that but this was sold for um twelve dollars at a thrift store and i probably today would still pay 180 to maybe 250 dollars for it um because again classic victorian um and a beautiful rendition of an angel playing cymbals absolutely absolutely beautiful um, and unusual. Um, and I hope you understand that I'm trying to show you the more unusual versions of cameos. And this one, no exception. This is a portrait cameo. So this man actually existed. He had to have been wealthy or important or of higher social status. And it's mounted in 14 karat and 12 karat gold. It's a sp split shank system on the side holding it together. I believe, and I think I'm right, I believe this probably started as a cufflink, and more than likely, um, it would have had a different construction on the back, and then someone, because you can tell something was going on here that was altered, so that was probably where a bar was soldered, and then the cufflink portion would be off the back of it. It's probably a match pair of cufflinks, is what I would want to imagine. Let me light up the back of this, because the stone again, look at the stone. Look at that stone. Mother Nature had a phenomenal day, and then an artist so carefully carved this. I think this face is probably one of the most handsome in my collection. The reason I say that is, again, the transparency of the areas where it's carved down, the nose, the eyes, the mouth, that's all completely planned out by the artist that carved these things. And age on this, 1860, 1870, but not after 1870. Cannonball um, border. So we have a double frame and then cannonballs soldered. So there's fully round that are uh, surround this, which I think further accentuates the powerfulness of this person and the powerfulness of the carving of the artist that constructed this. So one of the ones that I love. Uh, I used to wear it, and I don't think I've worn it in probably 18 years, I think was the last time I wore it. Um, ones that, um, again, I, I think I could be here all night. <laughs> I think I could go for another three hours. <laughs> um, Medusa. Um, we all, in Cameo Collectors, we all have to have a Medusa. Um, I have seven of them, and I'm embarrassed to say that, but, um, because I feel greedy, but I do want to let you all know that, um, something that I've been questioned about is, what is the intention of my collection? And it's to enjoy beautiful things, but I want to let you know that, um, the ultimate goal is, um, my items are going to be left to charity. Um, and I have one major charity um, picked out, and um, it's to do with animals um, and animal rescue. So all these things that I'm enjoying and sharing, um, although selfish and I feel you know guilty sometimes because I have so many beautiful things, uh, they'll all be left to charity. So um, Medusa will eventually be sold off and be able to have a homeless animal find a home. Um, so just so you know where the collection's eventually headed, because I was asked about that, and I felt it appropriate time to talk about it right now. Medusa, um, just beautiful. Um, she was, you know, uh, she turned men to stone, and you can see why. Um, beautiful, seductive, 
And um, uh, of the Medusa cameos I have, this is the most graceful. Um, she's not the most complex, um, because I have one that's much more complex. But she really, really, really has almost an angelic expression. Um, like she's up to no good. <laughs> um, and look at the tendrils of her hair. Um, the wings in um, her head as well. Um, some Medusas don't have the wings, uh, and I loved this one because it did have the wings. And there's the head of the snake, um, and there's the rest of the snake, um, at the bottom. Um, and the other snake, I think, did I find it somewhere else? I found the second snake head somewhere, and I've lost track of it now. But her face and shell cameo. Um, again, this part of the pin mechanism completely redone. Um, so always ignore that. Um, and then that is the original side. Okay, so just a replacement. Um, apparently one just broke off and uh, they resoldered it. A gold filled frame on this one. So that's not gold, gold filled frame, but again, sizable. So I went after the most detailed and the biggest that I could find. So there's your Medusa. Before anyone asks, do you have a Medusa cameo? And me say, I most certainly do. Um, this one, I believe this one is bull's mouth. And again, material wise, I will get into that, but I always remembered me later labeling this as, as bull's mouth shell. Um, and I, th I think I'm right. Um, I hope I'm right. And if not, I'll correct myself. Um, I'm not exactly sure who we have here. Um, subject matter wise, there were some that were always um, still being debated by historians. I'm not going to comment on who this is, but I'm just going to comment on it being unusual. Um, her face, her profile, these pieces that are in her headpiece, the way her hair is tied back, and then this portion of the outfit, I'm still deciding who this is. Um, and I did show it to two different advanced collectors, and they both had uh, differing opinions. So, and I don't think either person was wrong, I just don't know who's right yet. Um, and I'm always willing to listen to arguments when, well, not arguments, but, you know, um, proof of what something is. So we have a fold down a bail that's unusual, but an early clasp again, and again a tube hinge. It is, and unfortunately, someone sawed into this to test it, and I don't know why people continue to do that. There's no reason uh, to do that to, to antique pieces. So please, if someone ever tries to convince you to scratch test your items, please tell them no. And, 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 you know, don't be rude about it, but be firm. You know, please don't let someone dig into something like that. That's, it's just, it's sad. It, it doesn't need to happen. Um, with all the advances in testing, let, let's not do that to old things. Enough of a lecture series. Um, notice how the pin stem sticks way out. Okay, so this is like 1835, mm, 1835, 1845 on, on the date of this one. And um, again, for that age and time period, very unusual subject matter. Um, a pretty woman, but an unusual version. And um, sizable, you know, most of these were not this large. Most of them were much, much smaller. Now, the last one in that box, and maybe this was the bull's, bull's mouth shell cameo box. It very well might have been, um, and maybe the label fell off. Um, but I should be more prepared to talk about materials. But you know what? I wanted you to see beauty of, of my cameos. And and so that's, what, that's where we're at with this video at this point. So thank you for bearing with me. Uh, uh, an old repair here. So something had happened to um, this side of the cameo I'm sorry, this side of the mounting, and then someone as a metalsmith who maybe was also a plumber. <laughs> I'm sorry about that. Bad joke. Maybe that person was also a plumber because I'm not really sure what's going on here, okay? I would not have ever done that. Um, and I do restorations, and that would not be a Jason restoration. Um, makes me want to take it apart and, and do it right, but then, you know, you compromise um, the, sh the shell cameo itself. Um, okay, so what is original is <laughs> this tube hinge and the extended pin again, and then the just C clasp on this side. Okay, so simple wire. And you can see why people replaced these, because that's not really that secure of a mounting. I still wear brooches with, with this, but I wear them carefully. And might I make a small recommendation? There are now little rubber stoppers for earrings. They're like a little uh, silicon 
um, stopper for the back. Just when you put this on and you, you're done putting the brooch on, this is going to stick out anyway. So please just put a little rubber stopper from an earring. Get very carefully so you don't bend this. Put a little rubber stopper from an earring over this and, and butt it up against this. You'll, it, it will never come forward. Well, I shouldn't say never. It will almost certainly not come forward because it'll be through the fabric and then um, the little rubber stopper will help hold that in place. All right, enough of another lecture series or um, a suggestion, I should say, on a positive manner. This is, again, um, she's got grapes in her hair, and um, look at the tendrils of, of her hair, but then look at this. Look at the fur that is on her shoulder. Look at the animal's face. That is the thing. Look at it. That is the thing that got me going completely crazy about this cameo. Not only that, but look at the size of this. You know, if it was a third of the size, I would have done a cartwheel. If it was half the size, I would have done two cartwheels. <laughs> um, and it's, it's, look at it. it I, I, I go crazy thinking that I'm so blessed to own this and to be able to show it to you. So go after the unusual. Go after something that is 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 the best of its version. Don't compromise for just a, a classic, beautiful woman. Go after this. Um, that fur, that detail, the tendrils of the hair, and the detail in the carving, and then the detail of each little individual grape. I mean, give me a break, you know? And, and again, the light and shadow that happens with the face based on how the artist already saw that unfolding and utilized the shell to their advantage, you know? Um, I Again, I, I struggle to say anything better than beautiful, but I, I guess on this one I should say spectacular, you know, absolutely breathtaking spectacular. Now, um, to try and get this done, because I still have... Um, a pile and bags and bags and bags of cameos to show. Um, these were, oh boy, what a problem. I'm never going to get this video done. These were on-set cameos, and I'll just briefly go through them really quick. I'll leave them in their bags just for now. So look at that. Uh, just, again, such an unusual scene. And unfortunately, you know, bought at a pawn shop. And you know what happened. I have to take that out of this bag. Um, you know what happened. They they melted down the 14 karat or 18 karat gold frame that this was in. But look at, look at that. Um, Horse-drawn chariot on a night sky. Um, the gesture, the energy, the detail. Um, remarkable. Uh, just stunning. This gentleman, very, very, very old cameo. Um, almost impossible to date these when they get this early, but uh, um, I, I, I don't even know where to begin. Could be late 1700s on this one. Um, could be. So carved out of coral, angel skin, and the way the hair is modeled and the over dye, or shall you say, the um, the paint wash that's across the surface, only accentuates the eye and the nose and the profile. And I'm so grateful that that's still there, um, that no one cleaned this, because that's going to be extremely fugitive, meaning if you were to clean this or wash this, that would be completely gone, and the history of this piece would be greatly diminished. But uh, just beautiful. Um, I do have some fairly... Um, early cameos, not exactly ancient, um, but I do have ones that are, you know, old, old um, very, very old. I just didn't bring a lot of those out because they're not set, because the mountings have been lost to history, um, and they're not as interesting. And I think the reason why I didn't bring them is because I want to bring things that you can actually find. You know, you can find these things out and about because, trust me, I have. Um, and... I love this. I, I love this one. I love the detail. Um, and that is lava. So that is lava and volcanic lava. And I just, again, it was something that was probably on a panel bracelet mounted in gold. Um, and then unfortunately, they, um, you know, melted the mountings down, popped the stones out, melted the mountings down. This one I kept, and I'm not sure why, but I loved it. Look how simple. So a hard stone of a flower. I think it was like a dollar or something. Um, again, two layers of stone and then carved. But I thought that that would make a remarkable ring. 
I thought that would be beautiful to mount in silver or gold or frame it with diamonds. Um, it would also make a beautiful little pendant. So that was a keeper. Um, again, 18, you know, 1850, 1860 on that one. And this is also lava. And um, lava came in many, many, many colors. And this kind of putty color is one of the most common colors of lava. Sometimes it leaned a little bit more brown or a little more, a little bit more green. Um, but this one is the perfect example of lava. And I love her because look how they got up underneath her face again. So it gave great dimension and it gave, gave great light and shadow. And I was very surprised that the high points on this weren't chipped or worn down. So apparently she was probably taken out of her frame very early and maybe she wasn't even mounted. I have a tendency to think with this um, kind of discoloration around the outside, she was mounted. But some of these cameos were just carved and then never mounted um, and just sat in, you know, jewelry studio for you know a hundred years and and never put into a frame but I'm pretty certain that she was mounted and I would say a brooch um, based on the facing right um, and uh, yeah I would say definitely a brooch that's the right size for a brooch a little bit too big for a bracelet on that one so um, beautifully done let me put those aside I sure hope those don't fall into the box as I'm doing this and then We'll get into this one, and I so am glad you have stuck with me for over an hour. I'm doing my best here to kind of consolidate us down. Um, this one is a very well-known scene, and it was a painting, and I I'm sorry that I don't remember who the painting was by, but very well known. So a lot of the cameos that were produced back in the day in the Victorian time period were based on famous scenes, famous paintings, famous artwork. And these were miniature renderings that people could take with them. This is for sure Italian, and it's for sure lava, 100%. Um, so this is it, it, this is just so beautiful. Um, an angel embracing two small children. And then you have over here a front view flying from the front bird. So a uh, bird and then the wings. But look at the detail on the wings of the angel. And of course, her face. Just, just absolutely beautiful. Um, on the back, let's see here, correctly identified as lava. And yes, it was $35. I think when I bought this... I think I paid like $15 for it back in the day. Um, and I, w I couldn't resist this for at least $100 now. Um, but again, with a little bit of time, I'm going to be able to go into the studio and make some frames for these things out of sterling or gold. Um, likely sterling, because that's pretty much all I work in now. This one is um, a lava. And I think why I included her for you is um, unusual to see... A, a, a portrait from behind, you know. Um, she has her wings exposed to us. There is detail in the dragonfly wings that are on her back. And then her hair, the way it's tied up. Again, it's lava. Um, and I think we might be signed. Yep, we're signed on the back. Yep, there we go. There's the artist signature. Um, or the city that it came from in Italy. But it's Italian. Again, I don't want to clean it because I think... You know, seeing an honest surface to me always lends itself to seeing much more of the detail. If I start to clean this and clean all this away, it's going to become very flattened um, and the details wouldn't be as prominent. I loved her face and I loved her nose and I loved her little grin. Uh, there wasn't anything I didn't love about her. So that one got me completely crazy. <laughs> uh, crazier than normal, should I say. Let me not mix these up. And then they're going to go in the wrong bag. Another Madonna Virgin Mary. Um, this one, I don't know why I kept her. Um, maybe she'll have to go to somebody else's home. But I think why I kept her is the detail of the hair and the detail of the outfit. Oh, I kept her because she's wearing a necklace. That's why I kept her. Oh, let's take her out of there. And I think she, um, maybe because it was, I thought it was cowrie shell. But again, I'm probably wrong. <laughs> I don't want to start saying what the materials are yet. Um, yeah, I kept her because she has a necklace on and because she has a beautiful earring. And I kept her because I liked her brow ridge. I thought she was um, quite the beauty. And I think she's beautiful because she's unusual, you know? That's an unusual face. Um, and there's there's something about, you know, me with um, unusual and, and beautiful. And I think that's where my artist part came in, is my appreciation for 
um, things that were different, um, you know, and, and sometimes people shy away from things that are different, and I think that's where they make mistakes. Ooh, this one. I got to show you this one. <laughs> here we go. Uh, let's see here. Come on, focus. Yeah, there we go. Come on. How could I have not kept it? So again, a portion of a bracelet. So this is 14 karat gold, and this would have been, you see how this little melon shape would have been the links in between the lava carvings? This was an absolute have to keep. Again, I want to be quiet for a second and let you look. I love it. I, I just absolutely love it. The depth, the emotion, and um, I love him. I feel very protected when I have some of these things, um, and that's one of them. Um, and I will probably have to, at least at some point, have that in my pocket this week. Um, this one is not a cameo, but it's a stone carving. And um, for all my Chinese fans out there that love Asian art, Chinese and Japanese, I show you one of the most incredible and breathtaking natural tourmaline carvings. So this is tourmaline. It is both pink and green and a little bit golden. And it is a water blossom. It is a water lily. So there is the um, lily form and then a tendril and then either the lily pad or the leaf. So you have that. And then this abstract carving is actually a frog. Look at the frog. So there's his back. It's a little hard to see. Let me hold it steady. Take a minute. There's his back. There's his back leg. There's his front leg. And there's his little frog face. I loved this when I found it. They sold it to me as glass and immediately I knew that it was tourmaline and I knew that it was very old. So this has a lot of age to it. I don't know exactly how old and I'm not going to go there because I'm not 100% sure, but it is not new. Um, there is a hole drilled. Where did the hole go? Um, yeah, there we go. So there's a hole drilled there. It goes all the way through. So this was used as a pendant. Uh, this was only a necklace pendant and um, beautifully done. So there's that. Now, I'm almost done, almost done, almost done. <laughs> and this is round two. This is round one of uh, two rounds of cameos. <laughs> so uh, this is the story of Prometheus. Um, and I did Google Prometheus, and um, this is not carved wood as it was sold. I believe it's called conchineal. Uh, I see, here I go again, mispronouncing a word. Uh, conch, oh, conchineal conchineal shell. Um, I will um, put it in the description. I'll put the spelling in the description. But Prometheus was um, tied up and um, left to be um, devoured by um, wild birds. Um, talk about an unusual carving, right? Um, I believe that this was the lid of a snuff box. I don't think that this was ever a cameo to be mounted as a piece of jewelry, but when I found it, I wanted to mount it as a piece of jewelry because I found it to be um, stunning. I found it to be slightly, you know, eerie and frightening. Um, but uh, the gesture in the arms, the detail and the polish, the honest surface, again, 1870 um, or before, um, definitely could be before, but Prometheus and the story there, very, very unusual. And here we go. From one, um, you know, extreme to the other. <laughs> I don't know how I do this, but I think this is the story of my life. Then we go into this remarkable carving of a religious icon. It's the most incredible mother of pearl. And look at the hands. Look at the love and the affection. I'm going to zoom in. The mother of pearl and the stone that was used just, or I should say shell, look at the look at it. Um, heavenly, absolutely heavenly, the way that it's, the way that it's handled. So baby Jesus, and um, look at the old label. So fountain pen um, on, you know, the, uh, where the remnant of the label would have been. And look how thick the shell is. So when you look at some of the earlier carvings, something that's extremely early, they're much thicker. They're, they're much more substantial. Um, and that's further proof of it because you can see how thick that edge is, you know. Um, specifically in Mother of Pearl shell, I should say. Um, but 
I, I, I loved the iridescent nature and I loved the subject matter. Um, there wasn't anything that prevented me from bringing that home. Um, I found it at an auction and I knew that I was going home with it. Uh, two or three more and then I'm going to let you go. Uh, this one, I, um, I have a tendency not to have this out very frequently. I don't know how it started, but I wear this brooch to um, every funeral that I go to. And I know that's kind of a, a morbid thing to talk about. Um, but I have always... there. I don't know what it is about this, but every time someone has passed away, um, it started... I started wearing this in 1997. And I have worn it to every funeral that I've ever attended. Uh, family, friends... Um, you name it, it's it's always on me at, at every time I have to go to calling hours and um, say goodbye to somebody that I've loved um, or, or that's important to me. Um, I will let you just take this all in. It is carved stone, uh, front view, two swans, um, the hair, the grace, the depth, uh, something that I loved. The pin back has been replaced, so that's definitely a much, much, much newer pin back. Um, so I completely ignore that, but uh, makes this wearable. Um, at some point, the old pin mechanism was definitely likely high carat gold uh, because a carving like this, they would not have set in sterling silver or a lesser metal. Um, very early, early cameo. Um, probably uh, 1840, 1835 to 1845. Uh, the energy... And the eyes and um, its grace, it's the thing that um, always brings me some sense of um, comfort when I'm confronted with loss and death. And, um, uh, you know, as an emotional being, um, that's almost a talisman or something that reminds me of um, my faith that um, I will be reunited with those whom I've lost. And I know that to be 100% true. Um, so this is just uh, something that um, I'm surprised that I brought her on. Um, but I'm glad that I did because I love her and um, she very much so protects me. Let me put her back in her appropriate um, pouch over here. So on a lighter note and uh, a much happier note, um, this is not a cameo. But um, oops, let me zoom out a little bit more. This is nestled in its original box. So I, I want to prepare you because this is one of my favorites. Um, and I go completely crazy when I see it. Oh, my, 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 my. So it's, it's again, it's not a cameo, but um, it's one of my favorites. So what you're looking at is platinum and 18 karat gold. And you're looking at one of the finest rock crystals um, and I and a, a natural ruby and diamonds. Why not? <laughs> Let me get it out of here. So again, the gracefulness and um, the the elegance of something like this um, almost brings tears to my eyes to think of an artist uh, at the turn of the century producing something like this. Um, again, a trombone clasp, so this pulls out and then the pin releases. There are tons of little tiny hallmarks right there on the inside. Um, and then look at the azuring or the open work from behind with the diamonds. Really, really, really incredibly, incredibly crafted. Um, something that is so timeless and so elegant. And the gesture of this um, undulating branch that goes behind the rock crystal, the ruby itself, so stunning. And yes, there are tiny little chips on the crystal. There's one there and there's one here. Of course, you know, wearing rock crystal, rock quartz, and, and, and wearing it and not having it be damaged it is going to be unheard of. I think that it only adds to its authentic nature. But the grace and the gesture and the way the artist constructed this, the tiny little European bezel cut um, diamonds on the inside of the stamens, and then that ruby is just, it offsets the whole thing. But again, you know, something I could talk about forever. And look at the fitted box. So, you know, you, you, you look at some of these boxes and you say, was that box made for this? And it 100% is made for this because that snaps right down in there. You know, it's force fit in there. So that box was specifically made for that brooch. So again, I'll just let you take the beauty in. Um, I, I, I had to bring it. I, I will probably bring it to future videos when I talk about, well, 
uh, my rock crystal flowers, <laughs> my my brooches that are rock crystal. Um, and this one, um, again, before it went back to safety deposit, I thought I really needed to discuss this and I'm glad that I did. So there's that beauty. And I'm going to end the video on my favorite. Um, and I, I don't like playing favorites with my collection, but um, I'm, I, I'm entitled to do as I please. And this is my favorite. Um, <sighs> when I saw this chain, I knew I was in the presence of greatness. So I figured that as soon as I saw this, I said to myself, I am going to own that. So this is the 14 karat gold chain. Finding a chain like this, this early in 14 karat is almost unheard of now. So completely hand constructed, completely hand fabricated, white gold, and 14 karat and then it comes down to this and and be ready to be <laughs> um astounded um carved amethyst in the center and a pink let's say ruby slash sapphire border um i wouldn't disagree with calling these pink sapphire but on the appraisal from years ago listed as ruby of course um but let's just say pink sapphire hyphen ruby border in platinum and diamonds so the diamond border goes all the way around the work and the craftsmanship that went into not only the frame but the cameo itself and the hard stone carving look at the slight detail in her headpiece look at how it almost looks like lace but not overworked and she's three-quarter view so her face is turned just ever so slightly to the side. Um, and let me try and get the lint off of it <laughs> so you can see close and appreciate this. Again, it hasn't been out in a very long time. So no, it's still there. Um, it's just going to be dirty. Um, but she is exceptionally carved. On the back, look at that. So it is cabochon on the back, so it reflects the light. But look at the color zoning, because someone could say, well, that's glass. No, 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 hold up, that's totally stone. Um, so as soon as I saw that color banding in the stone, I knew that I was in the presence of a natural amethyst stone and not glass. So the carving and the detail work, she's even beautiful from behind. And look how realistic and how dimensional and her expression and her face and the loveliness. And then pay attention to the frame. You know, then pay attention to how that was constructed and um, how it was manufactured. Um, I, I, is, I, I see, I stumble over my words because I get so inspired by some of these things that were from a time period from long, long, long ago. So I leave that as um, my final testament to this first of um, Cameos 101, if you will. Um, so I just, oh, and I, I failed to mention, she is actually known as Bretonne, uh, which I, again, sorry about the pronunciation because um, I'm American, but um, a French um, maiden, if you will. Uh, but Bretonne was, um, uh, um, you know, a upper middle class uh, term used for um, this subject matter. Um, I love her. And you know how I always end this. I love you so incredibly much. Thank you for joining me for this. And again, sorry to run so late and sorry to have such rough fingers. <laughs> I'm so dried out in this terrible winter I'm encountering. It's seven degrees right now as I do this video. So you know it. I absolutely love you. I love you. Thank you so much. And please spread the word about my videos. And please leave me some comments. I love you so much. Have an incredible week. Bye-bye.